Hello, uh, so this screencast is part two of our discussion of partial molar properties. Uh, and so our quick little recap from our last video, which you should watch first, is we're gonna let F be some arbitrary thermodynamic state function uh, with independent variables TP, uh, XI. Uh, so XI is just generically meant to um, indicate at a specific composition. Uh, so if this were a binary system, I would need only specify say mole fraction of component one. If it were a ternary system, say mole fraction of component one and two, so the composition of that system is, is fixed. Okay, um, And so our definition of a partial molar property, so partial molar F of component I is the differential of F total, F total being my extensive F upon adding some differential number of moles of species I, holding everything else constant. Right? And so in this view, uh, it's a thermodynamic response function. It tells us how F total would change upon adding some differential number of moles of species I, holding everything else constant. Okay. Um, it can also be interpreted as essentially the effective uh, value of the molar F of component I in my mixture uh, at those conditions. Okay, Because when I have uh, you know, the analogy we used or the example we used is molar volume, uh, the effective space uh, occupied per mole of component I in the mixture is going to be different than in its pure component system because now we're going to have to deal with these, say, uh, interactions of, say, component 1 with component 2, which would be different than how 1 uh, interacts with, with 1. Okay, And so what we're going to build off of that is next, what I want to do uh, is I want to work out an expression for um, the differential of F total with independent variables of TP, and then we'll use the moles of um, each species okay, as our independent variables. So extensive F, so thinking back to, uh, I believe it was chapter seven when we extended our fundamental equations from chapter five uh, to open systems that essentially allows us to account for uh, the change in composition, okay, or a change in number of moles uh, in our system. Right? But here, and for mixtures now, we could think of it in terms of a uh, change in, in composition. Okay, which if you think to partial molar properties, you know, okay, change in compositions, you know, making sense. All right, so if I want an expression for the differential of F total, okay, that has independent variables of temperature, pressure, and then I'm just gonna write Ni, but Ni is meant to indicate the moles of each species uh, in the system. Okay, how I proceed is, well, the differential of F total, okay, would be equal to, I'm going to differentiate first F total with respect to my first variable, okay, dt, holding everything else constant, so that's going to be a constant p, uh, and I'll just write n, n's the moles of, um, you know, all of my species, moles of species 1, species 2, and so on and so forth, okay, and that's uh, dt plus df total dp at constant t and n dp plus, okay, now I'm going to write this as a summation because what I'm going to have to do is then I have to su uh, differentiate f total, okay, with respect to the moles of each species, holding everything else constant, okay, and we'll say exactly what this means in a second, dni, okay, and so what I mean here by a summation, okay, is you know, n, so if I had a binary system, by ni here, uh, I would need n1 and n2, right? So if I specify n1 and n2, I could calculate, say, the mole fractions of component 1, then also my extensive n, which is needed to define the extent of my system, right, which is needed for an extensive property. So I would need to write, let's see if I can get my cursor over here, I would need to write um, one of these differentials for each species, right? So I'd have one term, which would be df total dn1, a constant TP and N2, DN1, plus <clears throat> DF total DN2, uh, a constant TP and N1, um, DN2. Right? I have to write it for each species, so here I've just generalized it. Okay? And okay, because I'm probably sounding confusing now, okay, just for clarity, so if I have a binary system, okay, <clears throat> so if I have a binary system, okay, what do I mean by this term? Okay? Well, my system composition, so n, and the composition of my system will be fixed by n1 and n2. I'll need the moles of each species, okay? So if I'm looking at this term, okay, what that'll mean then is, well, when I was writing out this last term, well, okay, let's just do the whole thing. So if I had a binary system, okay, then f total 
okay, would be a function of temperature, pressure, and one, and then two. Okay, so if I were to write out an expression for the differential of F total, then, okay, I'd have DF total dt at constant p and one and then two dt plus partial f total <coughs> partial p at constant t and one and then two put a comma in there dp plus the differential of f total dn1 at constant t p and then 2 and this is d and 1 plus let's see if I can squeeze in here partial f total partial n1 and 2 and constant t p and n1 okay hope I'm trying to fit in here uh, it's not going to let me so that should be an n1 and then this would be d uh, and 2 okay sorry I'm trying to squeeze it in there but this sum term, right, it, all I'm trying to do is write in a compact way that I'd write this equivalent expression um, using the moles of each species. Okay, so this is just my compact way of writing that. Okay, and now here, you know, it's clear, you know, my N notation has just meant the moles of each species. Okay, so now if I go back to this general expression, okay, now the thing to point out is if I first look at these first two terms, Okay. In these first two terms, the moles of each species is being held constant. Okay. So moles of each species and the total number of my moles is fixed and constant. So these first two terms would correspond to essentially uh, closed system terms. Right? N is constant, moles of each species is being held constant. Okay. And so what I could do here, okay, if I take it in two steps, okay, if I just work on the first terms first, okay, so I know that F total Okay, well, I want to write this. So I know that F total, I can rewrite as N times F. Okay, so this is the differential of N times F, DT <coughs> at constant uh, P and N uh, DT, okay, plus um, partial N times F, partial P at T and N, dp okay so you know let me write that down when I mean in closed system but now for completeness I'm just gonna keep this sum over I df total dni at constant t p okay and j is just meant to mean the moles of all other species other than I dni okay so now I write that down okay so n is being held constant here Okay, these are my closed system terms. So N can be taken out of my differential. So I can rewrite this as DF total okay, is equal to N times okay, the differential of F times the differential of T at constant P. Okay, and now instead of N here, I'm just going to write this as X, right? Because F, right, my molar F is going to be a function of temperature, pressure, and composition. Okay, so I'm just going to write it as pressure and, and composition, right? So composition I could calculate uh, by knowing the moles of, of all the species in my system, which is all fixed and constant. Okay, so I'm going to write this as N times DF dt, the constant P and X dt, plus um, oh, N times partial F partial P, okay, a constant T, and again X just to indicate constant composition, DP plus moles of sum over I, DF total, DNI, a constant T, P, and then J, DNI. Okay, so these first two terms again correspond to my closed system terms. Okay. So, you know, if F were, say, G, my molar gives free energy, well, this first term then right here, I just have D, G, D, T, uh, a constant P, right, and constant composition, right? So if I think back to um, chapter 5, um, 
Well, let's see. Uh, DG is negative SDT plus VDP, right? So if you know F were G, all right, I could replace this with just uh, negative S, right? Negative uh, molar S of my mixture. If this were G, well, DG DP at constant temperature and composition, right? That would just be V, the molar volume of my mixture, all right? So these are just my closed system terms, okay? Correspond to my system at constant composition. So it's this last term then, which I can interpret as my open system term, which can account for change in composition or fluctuation in the number of moles uh, in my system. Okay. Now as we look at this last term here, okay, I recognize that this is nothing more than our definition of our partial molar property. Right? Df, d total, dni, a constant tp and nj. Right? Every, so change in f total with respect to adding a differential number of moles of species ni, holding everything else constant, that's just our definition of f bar i. That's our definition of a partial molar property. Okay, so I can rewrite this then as d f total. Ah. Okay, is equal to n times partial f, partial t, a constant p and x dt plus n times d f d p a constant t and x dp plus, I'm going to write that as sum over i f bar i dni. Okay, cool. Okay, so this last term is just sum over i f bar i partial molar property of uh, partial molar f of component i uh, times dni times the differential number of moles of species i. So my open system term, this term that accounts for fluctuation in the number of moles in my system or change in composition, okay, this, um, this fluctuation term, open system term, is just my partial molar property. Okay, this is where my partial molar property comes into play. Cool. Okay, so here is my expression for the differential of F total using independent variables, temperature, pressure, and composition. Okay, first two terms again correspond to my closed system term. Second term corresponds to my open system term. Okay, so I'm going to pause here, save this, and we'll pick up in a third screencast to try and break this into little digestible parts.